So basically, the concept is easy. And um, we are in a market that analysts estimate to be over $28 billion is the office, mar office suite market. They don't make a specific breakdown of the market, so they don't say how much is desktop, how much is cloud, how much is smartphones, and, uh, but the fact is $28 billion, billion with a B, not billion with any other letter. Billion with a B, it's a huge amount of money. So, they also estimate that there are in the, in the world, there are uh, around 3 billion people using uh, a kind of office software. Um, and which means that more or less we are close to 30, 30 billion, 3 billion. So let's, uh, of course, uh, we, are, we are just adapting the numbers. And uh, you know that we estimate to have uh, around 200 million users. We estimate that probably 100 are people that use mainly LibreOffice and 100 use LibreOffice with another office suite. Can be uh, in the cloud, uh, mobile, uh, whatever. Um, today the market has changed. It's not like uh, we started uh, with OpenOffice. I started with OpenOffice in 2004. At that time, it, the market was clear. There were a few Microsoft Office clones, there was Microsoft Office, and there was OpenOffice. And the market was uh, divided, if you can call it, it this way, between Microsoft Office and OpenOffice. Microsoft Office was claiming to have 95% of the market. This has never been true. Uh, but they were claiming Microsoft uh, as a, a gigantic ego problem and therefore they wanted to control the world. Uh, in any case, uh, uh, OpenOffice at the time had a solid 10% plus uh, market share. Today, I, I don't think that we are in the same position, as I said. So let's say that we have uh, around 3 to 5% market share, which I think is absolutely reasonable in terms of numbers. So uh, if, if you think about the $28 billion, our value is uh, $1 billion, more or less. The value of the market we, we target, we address. And we are, in terms of value of the community, the businesses around it, um, ecosystem companies, uh, people, people making value added around the LibreOffice, we are far, far away from being one billion dollar market. So we have an opportunity to grow our uh, size because we already address that market. We address a market, we don't get the money from the market. So we should improve the way we get the money from the market that we already address. So the market that is already using LibreOffice or a form of LibreOffice. Hey, uh, Uh, so, the, the, the question for the people that have not heard it is about uh, ASA's 
that is the value of licenses, basically, or the money that is uh, used to purchase a product. This was true in the past, it's not true anymore. So what the analysts uh, are evaluating is the value of the market. So they give a value to each user and then multiply that value for the number of users because the value of licenses would not be any more significant. You, you have, um, it was significant in the past when uh, it was just possible to buy uh, a license and the, the cost of the license was more or less uniform or the same or similar. Today, you have uh, different licenses. If you have a, a full license of Microsoft Office for the desktop, you will spend probably around 200 euro or dollars per year. Um, but that has to be within a corporate license, while if you are an individual, you can only buy 365, which is a subscription that costs uh, in the States half of what it costs in Europe, and I don't know how it costs in the other markets. So the analysts in front of this mess have started to give a value to users. So it's, of course, it's an average value, it's an estimate. It may, they may be wrong, I think that as this uh, is a combination of uh, the value estimated by Gartner and IDC, they are the two largest uh, analysts, I think that at the end uh, we can consider that a very good approximation. But the fact is that we, the, the reason I'm, I'm using data is that because we are there in any way, we are part of that market. So we have to understand that we have, uh, when we started, you know, this slide has 13 years. I created it in 2010 for the announcement of LibreOffice. And if you think it's still uh, valid in terms of concept, of course, uh, uh, a visual is just uh, trying to transmit a visual concept. We are still trying to innovate in a market where uh, there, are, uh, there is a number of uh, software that are not innovating. Uh, they may do some small innovation, but for instance, if you take only Office, WPS Office, they are cloning Microsoft Office more than innovating. Of course, we are following Office as well. It's a kind of reference. But we also develop features that, in some cases, are not there in Microsoft Office, or we develop them in a different way. Uh, while, uh, if you look at only Office, only Office as an interface that has clearly been developed to mimic Microsoft Office interface almost 100%. Our uh, ribbon-like interface, if you prefer to call it this way, is not like Microsoft. So it's a, people can say it's good or bad, but it, it's different. So in a market where today you have a lot of cloning and this uh, the young people do not remember it. This is exactly what was happening in the 90s. People started to be fed up paying uh, Microsoft licenses, and there was a number of clones coming up. They were free, almost free, uh, and, and they were clones. They were just alike Microsoft Office. And I can tell you, because uh, I was one of the first to be fed up paying Microsoft Office licenses, and I started to test all the clones. And in 2001, I remember, uh, I downloaded OpenOffice because I was following the media and I was talking with journalists. I downloaded the first version of OpenOffice and I realized it, it wasn't a clone. So I said, uh, this, as a, this is good to, to to test. Of course, it was an anthology of bugs at the time, 
but it was different. It was clearly a different software with a, let's say, let's say that a software with a soul, not that, I know that, a, that software is not a soul, but if you look at software not from the technical point of view, and you know that I'm not technical, you, you, you figure out the software like something that you know. And I understood that behind OpenOffice at the time, although it was very immature, but became mature with one and one, and then with two, it was even better. There was something, there was an idea, there was a concept, there was a community. I discovered that later. And the reason I'm here is exactly that difference that OpenOffice had with the rest of the market. Today, we are back in that situation. It, maybe you don't remember, but we had uh, uh, a, an office suite by Corel based on WordPerfect and other products. It has disappeared. That was different, uh, but it has disappeared. So we have a, during the history, we had a, a, a time where there were competitors of Microsoft Office, which had a, a soul like OpenOffice and LibreOffice, but the others have disappeared. We are still here. And uh, we have a flag of diversity with the market. And I think this is our flag of diversity is what we have to stress with people. Uh, and of course, uh, in some cases, our flag of diversity is uh, not easy to communicate. Uh, for instance, if you talk about a community, it's not easy for people to understand what a community is. And if you add to the, to the picture of the community, the fact that there are volunteers and companies and people who's paid and people who are not paid, this adds to the confusion of the, the person because they don't understand. They don't understand uh, when, uh, uh, during the, the open office time and uh, for a number of years during the LibreOffice time, I was doing this, uh, the, the, my, my marketing job totally as a volunteer and people was asking me, but why? And I said, because I, I have fun, uh, it's nice, but people on the other side, they don't understand why we are contributing to a software. Uh, people does not understand what developers are doing. Um, people think that maybe they think that the software gets translated by, you know, by a, a, a robot and uh, instead that it gets translated by people. Uh, it's funny how people perceive software when they are not into the software business. And uh, so we, we had different cycles, development cycles. Of course, this, uh, if you want, is a marketing representation of what has happened. Developers have never had development cycles, but to make them easy to understand to the outside world, uh, you have to create a message that is easy to understand. So this is easy to understand. We have cleaned the code there. We have refactored the code. We have improved the user interface. Now we get to compatibility, interoperability. We are very good at that. And it's difficult. The reason, one of the reasons why the next version will not be 8, but will be 24.2, is because we, we really, and believe me, I try to crash my head, uh, which is extremely solid uh, against walls, but it's, it's difficult to find a sixth development cycle. So our next cycle is uh, we are the diverse office suite. Do you want to be part of the mass gets Microsoft Office? Don't look even at clones. Clones are, yeah, if you want to save some money, use a clone, but it will be like, uh, you know, um, having the, uh, for, for a woman, having a false Louis Vuitton bag. Uh, yes, it gives you a false uh, 
perception that you are uh, trendy and uh, but the people will look at you and say oh she hasn't even the money to buy the real one and uh, i can tell that my wife can spot a false louis vuitton from one kilometer she has not a real one but she can spot a false one from one kilometer look by looking at that that's false okay i don't even understand that is a louis vuitton bag but uh, you know that there, there is that there is a hidden language of the body that you allows you to understand this kind of stuff we we have a this is an incredible effort uh, i've added desktop because the wikimedia people get got offended by me saying that it was the most translated software in the world uh, so i added desktop uh, yes wikimedia is available in more languages but it's 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 a uh, like 50 string to translate is not like translating LibreOffice, but I don't, didn't want to get into the, you know, the number of string. Uh, so I said, we are the, the desktop software available in more languages. And this is something significant in a world where inclusiveness is an issue. In many geographies in Europe, we all know the issue we have with inclusiveness, but if you go to, to, the, to the southern states of, in, in the United States, uh, people are trying to build walls and uh, they, they are doing similar things around, around the world. In a, in a world where inclusiveness is an issue, we provide a tool to help people feel inclusive. Uh, in Italy, uh, we have, um, in Milan, I have suggested to a school uh, that had an, a, a large number, the majority of students were not native Italians. They were speaking Italian, the, but they were not native. So I, I suggested to a teacher to install LibreOffice and start using LibreOffice to each different students in their native language, of course, with the objective of then uh, switching to the Italian version. And this helped a lot, several students, and among them, several Romanian students, because of course, you feel more at ease in using a software if the menus are in your native language that in, they are in English. Of course, if you speak English fluently, that doesn't make a difference, but in many cases, it makes a, it makes a difference. So, language is something that we have to stress. And then we have uh, this incredible advantage. Of course, uh, you can say that this is a marketing trick. It is, but it's also real it's not it's not we are not cheating people if we say that we use the same engine for all platform of course the engine is adapted you cannot use a an engine which is 200 megabytes of executable on a smartphone of course so we have to adapt the engine but the engine is the same so we have a cons better consistency and the reality is that if you use LibreOffice on different platforms it's easy because the features are I would say 99% of feature is there this doesn't happen if you use Microsoft Office on a smartphone the number of feature is probably 10% of the feature of Microsoft Office and if you use it on the cloud it's not the same number of feature of, of the desktop version not to mention that they are producing documents which are visually identical, but in terms of XML are completely different. I know that you cannot tell a user to open the XML of the document, but talking with some technical people, uh, consistency of the document uh, is an advantage. So we are now in a, 
in a situation, and of course, the concept of LibreOffice technology is a marketing concept, but we, the reality is that we have evolved from a desktop-only product to a product that is available on different platforms. And therefore, we can say that we are a technology, LibreOffice is a technology, it's not just a product anymore. This makes us different with the others. Of course, uh, basic user will not listen to all this rant about technology, but if you talk with people in, uh, in, uh, that is in businesses uh, that has an interest of understanding about the product, the concept that we are, we, we have a better base than we have incompetent users like me that make that use the wrong template and, and have two logos overlapping one with the other, but this is the incompetent user. Uh, and the, the concept of LibreOffice technology is similar uh, to the concept, you, you remember when Intel had similar problems, they, they developed the Intel Inside concept. So the, the, real, com the real computers mm -hmm were those with the Intel inside logo to be different from the others with, with other, uh, with, with other uh, silicon. Of course, today the situation has changed. Intel is not investing anymore on the Intel inside logo because now you have the Apple silicon, you have the ARM uh, processor. So situation has evolved, but we are, in that situation. So Intel wanted to be different from the others in the market. We want to be different from the others in the market. Thinking that we can address a market of 3 billion users is just wishful thinking. We will never address a market of 3 billion users with a project base on, uh, with, on uh, volunteers. But even if everyone was paid, the numbers are so big that the difference in number is so big that there's no way. Uh, the Italian subsidiary of Microsoft is 700 people. And this is excluding the administration, which is all based in Ireland. So basically they have 700 people in sales and marketing and post sales. So if we have 700 people globally, I think we are happy. We cannot fight with a company which, which is that size, as a huge capitalization, as a huge amount of money. So our chance is to say we are different. You want a different uh, product, a different uh, office suite, try LibreOffice. It will provide you the same feature, but it's different. It gives you a better ethical background. Uh, if you support the software, you will uh, probably contribute to uh, minority languages to be maintained, uh, which is something that doesn't happen if you use uh, Microsoft Office. They don't give a damn about minority languages. They have translated Microsoft Office in the fourth official language of uh, Switzerland, uh, which is the uh, Romance language, uh, because, um, my, because uh, the Swiss government has paid one million French francs to translate it. They got the translation almost for free for LibreOffice, uh, Actually, it was translated for free. They had a company double-checking the translation, but it costed them uh, probably 10,000 French francs. So a, a difference which is not even, and we, we didn't make the, the translation into the Romance language because we were looking at a potential business. We did it because there were volunteers in that area that took the time to translate LibreOffice. And this is happening in many languages. 
So we have the opportunity to be different. Um, I've left Red Hat on the desktop. I don't know if they still provide, I think they still provide uh, with the latest version. Probably in the future, Red Hat will not be providing uh, LibreOffice on the desktop. But of course, uh, we will always provide uh, uh, binary to install on uh, on Red Hat or Fedora or, uh, or distributions. But we have uh, a number of software that are based on the technology and they are consistent. Uh, and uh, we have developed this logo. Uh, it tells me that there's... Mike, can you check? Because it tells me that there's, I have no internet connection. Sorry. It's okay, okay. Maybe it was just a hiccup in the connection. We have developed this logo. Um, please use it. Please use it. Because that is the logo of our diversity. It doesn't say LibreOffice Suite. It says LibreOffice Technology. Of course, then we have to, to explain what it is about. But if we get to the point of explaining what is about, we have already won. Because we went after, beyond the wall of saying, oh gosh, it's an office suite, I don't mind. As long as it's writing document, uh, I can use it. Which is the superficial approach of the majority of users. So if we have to explain, because we call it tech LibreOffice technology, we have just won the attention of the person. We may have not won the person as a user, but at least we will inform him that there is something different from a, a, an office suite that is thrown in the market uh, without any soul, again, behind. And of course, when, when I say all this, uh, please consider that I'm, we, we are not, we, we don't have to communicate to the community. We respect the community, we love the community, we talk with the community, we discuss with the community, we fight with the community. Uh, perfect. We communicate to users. We don't communicate. Communicating with us, it's easy. We have mailing lists, Telegram groups, uh, Matrix groups. Uh, we are not the objective of our communication. The objective of our communication are the users. This is the reason why I really invite you warmly, if you make a presentation, to add that logo somewhere. And. Uh, try to, to, to create some uh, mystery around the logo so that people can ask you, but why you talk about technology? All the others will talk about the shiny new features of their software. While we will tell them uh, you can count on, on our software because it's a technology, it's, it's different, it's independent, it's not made to be similar to any other software. Then, of course, we provide features which are the same, and those features are similar. Uh, if you print, you print. You cannot do printing in a weird way. But we are different because uh, we have uh, something different to tell people. And, of course, if you look at the brand iceberg, we know things that the user doesn't know. For the user, the product is a name and a logo. They launch LibreOffice in the morning, they see the LibreOffice logo, and in some cases, they even understand that it's a different product. Because I've seen people using LibreOffice, launching LibreOffice, saying, I'm using OpenOffice. Okay, where you did see open in our splash screen. Or in, some, in other cases, they say, this is Microsoft Office. No, where is the Microsoft Office logo on our splash screen? So. Users are, they, they in, in many cases, they don't really look at the software. They don't really look at what, at the tool that they use because in many cases, and again, 
I will repeat the example of my wife. We have been married for 29 years, so you can understand that after 39 years I have a, my wife uh, as is uh, for me is the top person in the world. Uh, sorry for all of you, but my wife's come first. Okay. And my wife has the user attitude. I, two days ago, she called me and she said, uh, I've launched Microsoft Office and it doesn't work. The reality is that she launched Office 365, that the company she's working for had installed from remote on her computer, and uh, she didn't even realize that the splash screen was different, that she was writing a document on the cloud instead of writing on, on the desktop. And she was complaining because she was trying, of course, to call documents on the desktop, but because they wanted her to save everything on the server, they had disabled the, the possibility of saving on her desktop. And I, of course, calling from another country, it was difficult, I said, call the support, and the support tell, told her, you can't save on your desktop anymore. And uh, she said, oh, so it's not the software as before. She said, no, it's another software, but she didn't realize it at all. And as I said, my wife, for me, is a very smart person, but she's a normal user of software. So she doesn't give a damn about software. Exactly. Exactly. So, and of course, uh, I've not added sovereignty, which is another strong point of LibreOffice, because uh, I think uh, we have so many messages that we can give. But be believe, we have a relationship with LibreOffice that is not the same relationship of the users. So don't expect a user to see LibreOffice how we see it. Expect a user to ask extremely stupid questions about the software. And uh, we have just to appreciate the fact that they are using a software. In some cases, they hate the software because they would prefer to use a pen and a piece of paper. Uh, that's the, that, that's the world, uh, uh, and uh, I think uh, really help, we, we should help everyone by underlying the fact that we are a diverse project. We provide a, a different software to people that want to be slightly different from the majority. You remember, you may remember, it's a proprietary example, but you probably remember when uh, Steve Jobs was back at Apple in mid-90s. In, uh, mid he made the advertising about the full people. So he made an advertising where it was not showing users, but it was showing different people. There was Einstein, in the advertising, there was Marie Curie. There were people that are different. And he said, Apple is for different people. So do something similar. LibreOffice is for people that want to be different. I think that the, that niche is big enough for us to, to, to increase the number of users, to increase the number of companies that want to be different. Of course, if you want to be different, there is a price on the difference, and you have to make some effort. Otherwise, go to the wonderful world of Windows and Microsoft Office. This, of course, is not an invitation for you, but for the people outside this building. And uh, have fun, if possible. I don't think they will have fun. 
while with LibreOffice they may have a lot of fun, uh, especially if they understand the value of the community behind the product. If they understand that when they receive an email, it's someone that is really caring for the product, is not someone that is just providing an answer because it is paid to give the answer. We are passionate. We, we try to help the users because we want them to, lie, to like and love LibreOffice. And this makes us different. So thank you for listening. Sorry for going a little bit over in terms of time. Um, of course, uh, thank you again for the people that have supported this conference. Uh, and uh, now I will just switch presentation because uh